Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and you may have noticed there's been quite a bit of Blender content on this channel of late, and that's because, frankly, Blender is changing more than it has in the past decade in a very short period of time. And that is because of something called Blender Code Quest. Essentially, um, some of the core developers for the Blender are all together in the same spot right now, and they are really banging out the changes on Blender 2.8. And the one they did most recently, it's probably going to be the most controversial change so far. As you saw from the title graphics, they are changing keyboard shortcuts. And this is probably the uh, the line in the sand for a lot of developers. A lot of people are not going to move past 2.79 until they've at least modded back their support. And I think, honestly, this is a bit of a mistake because... Well, frankly, the keyboard shortcuts don't make a whole lot of sense as they are now. Now, muscle memory has kicked in. People know them and love them. But the new set actually makes a lot more sense in a lot of ways, as we will see in a second. So I'm being using an in-development version of Blender, Blender 2.8. You can download it at builder.blender.com. Uh, oh, sorry, blender.org. Um, and I'm downloading this version right here. For some reason, the non-VC14 one doesn't work on Windows for me. Uh, but anyways, keep in mind, this is very much an under-development, nightly built type scenario. So we're probably going to have a crash or some problems during this. And also keep in mind, this is actively under development. So everything we're about to see here isn't necessarily set in stone. Now, if you're not an existing Blender user, you're not going to care about a lot of these changes because, well, they don't, you don't have the muscle memory built up. They probably make more sense from a new user perspective. So if you're just learning Blender, wait for Blender 2.8. And frankly, these new changes will make it easier to learn. And today we're going to talk very specifically about keyboard shortcuts, but I want to show you one of the other major changes, again, kind of controversial, I bet, that they've done in the newest release, and that is they have removed double columns. So a lot of times you would come over here into property panels, etc., and you would have two sets of controls this way. And that has a downside in that um, you could only scale it down. It took up a certain amount of real estate. So now everything has only a single set of controls. So there you see, you'll only ever have one row, but it allows you to scale down the interface quite a bit smaller. Is this an improvement? Well, it kind of depends. If you're working on, like, say, a 4K 30-inch uh, monitor where you had all kinds of real estate, no, this is definitely not in your advantage. And I'm not sure if this will be toggleable, but if you're working with a constrained amount of real estate, then yes, this is very much a nice feature. Plus, now you can also um, tab between options a lot faster, or you can actually scroll down and set a bunch of options pretty much all at once. But this is a minor change in this release. So they went from two columns down to a single column on all of their panels. Again, it's going to be a bit of a controversial release, but nothing compared to keyboard shortcuts. And the keyboard shortcuts, the key one that they've changed here is control tab experience. Now, if you're not used to working with Blender, basically in the past, control plus the tab key was used to switch between modes. So you see this drop down right here. Well, you would do control tab one for object, control tab two for edit, or you'd do a control tab with no number to cycle between modes. And I always actually found the cycling a little clunky uh, because it would be selective on how it dealt with um, these ones and beyond, weight painting, vertex painting, texture painting. You could only tab into one of those at a time. So it was a bit confusing. Plus, this is one of the most common actions you're going to do. Switch between object and edit mode, texture mode, etc. It, it is so common that why is this a three key hotkey? It's the same way as setting the pivot point in Blender was like control shift alt period or something to that effect. So some of the hotkeys that existed in the old fashioned Blender just made no sense. There were legacy stuff that, um, you know, you're going to, if you're a diehard Blender user now, you're going to defend them with your dying breath probably. And that's just because you've gotten used to them. From a pure logistics point of view, they're kind of stupid. You should have single keys for your most commonly used stuff. And that's kind of what they've done here. So now the the one through uh, zero key across the top is what you use to toggle between those modes. So if I hit the two key, we're in edit mode, one key, object mode, three key, weight paint, four key, uh, vertex paint, five key, texture paint. Now, some of these ones are context sensitive based off of what you're doing. Six goes into sculpt, seven back to object, which is a little strange, but that's basically what they have done there. So the, they're using now the number keys to switch between modes. And as I said, that makes a lot of sense because these are the things you're going to do most commonly. Now, the problem is those number keys had uses before. Now, I most commonly use them for laptop mode. Um, I run entirely on laptops and a lot of the Blender's workflow is built around having a number pad for navigating between the different view options. Now, this is actually going to be implemented using the uh, tilde key, which is going to pop up a 
menu, allowing you to choose different viewports. But there's also another option that they've added in, and it's this guy right here. So if you're using a beta build, you can go into user preferences, interface, and turn that on with the navigation manipulator. So this is also how you can switch between view modes now. And you'll notice a lot of the things that they're doing here, toggleable commands over here, uh, this control right here, it's obviously building towards a touch interface. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think touch is gonna be more and more popular in the future, so they need to find a way to support it. But you'll see here, you've got your various, various different camera modes. You can hop between them. So your different directions, then we can jump between uh, orthogonal and perspective uh, projections and camera mode. Uh, and then here you can now uh, dolly and zoom your camera, pan your camera, etc. move out of camera mode. And you can do that again with your viewport using those controls right there. This makes an infinite amount of sense and it's definitely nice to see. And then once again, eventually the tilde key, uh, so generally the top left before your escape key, that key is going to be used for switching between the view modes as well. It's gonna pop up a menu where you can choose front, left, back, etc. cetera. Um, so those, you know, ultimately I think are a good move. Plus the number pad key, if you have a number pad going on your setup, is still going to work to control the camera. Now there's a couple of other changes that have happened here. Now since the tab key is now freed up, what they've done with it is, I'll show you right here, here, let's create a new view. So we got animation in general. If I do control tab, we now jump between those tabs. And then I think it's control shift tab does it in reverse. And that is, you know, for better or worse, navigating through tabs using control tab is pretty much the universal norm. That's how you do it in your browser, in your word processor, everywhere else. So it does make sense to follow the industry norms on that. And I'm not really offended by that change at all. Also, what they've done is single press tab. If you press it, brings up the quick search bar. Now, if you've been using Blender 2.7, this is your iconic space menu. And people used it so often, I'm fine with that. This is a commonly used thing. It makes sense to be bound to the tab key. So that means that now the space key is freed up. And this one I don't really get. Like the whole idea behind their space bar is so that, you know, let me switch into edit mode. So I'm going to hit over here to two. Now that we're in two or edit mode, if you, uh, as I mentioned in the earlier video, now these things like smooth is a per operator thing. So now that it's selected each time I click, that operator is going to apply. Well, the space bar, if you hit it, basically is bringing up this menu. So, you know, you're basically seeing the same thing you see on the tools menu on the left, which has an advantage. Basically, you could get rid of that tools menu completely and have it pop up on the fly. But this is actually setting toggle mode. So see, we're in smooth mode now. I can switch into edge slide mode and it's switching the, the toggle off. So you're still going to use your one and done. So if you just want to do it once, so if you just want to bevel once, you would still use um, the old uh, command that you would use for that. Whereas here, this toggles you in and out of bevel mode. Uh, if you like this as an improvement or not is up to you, but basically, so I can do B for, oh, that's box select. Uh, was control B was bevel. Uh, if I do space, okay, space E, for example, should do an extrude. So E is a single one and done extrude. Space E turns me into extrude mode. It's, it's a little confusing, but basically now your space bar is going to be the equivalent of popping up this window. So if you want to get rid of it now, uh, you can bring it up on the fly like so. I guess it makes sense. I, I, this Getting used to this, um, this chain is going to take a bit of time. Now, one other thing that you're probably wondering at this point is how do you switch between different modes? So here I am, I hit the two key and I'm in edit mode. Well, edit mode has uh, multiple options. So you see here, you've got uh, the uh, vertex, edge, and polygonal editing mode. Well, to switch between those now, basically you hit the two key and then you, if you're in the two mode, then the sub menu will come up. So here I am in one mode, so I'm in object edit mode. Here I hit two, I switch over to edit mode, two again, and I can switch between them. And that I think is actually pretty straightforward. I think for the people using the current system, that will be immediately obvious to go with. So Again, this one is going to be a controversial change. People do not like to change up the keyboard settings. And the nice thing is that in Blender, you can generally customize all of this stuff anyway. So this is just the default setting. I guarantee you by the day one that Blender 2.8 ships, there will be a plugin or an option basically gives you 2.79 legacy mode keyboard controls. So this is mostly for people just starting out. And I like it. I, I actually honestly think that most of the changes they are making are for the best best and completely makes sense. I question on this one. Uh, I, I don't know about single column. I think it's advantageous for people working on a smaller screen or on uh, a touch screen. Uh, but future people or for people with a large laptop, I'm not sure about that change. And once again, I don't like the way they've used this bar. And what I really don't like is if I switch into sculpt mode, I don't like all of these drop down menus for things. It just seems a little 
I don't know. It seems clunky to me. And I, I know there's a lot of feedback. Other people aren't particularly liking that all that much either. Uh, but at least in sculpt mode, this bar makes sense. When you're in other modes, it's just dead wasted space. So I'm harping on that one a bit. People people are really kind of controversial about how this bar is used and if it should be global or if it should be attached to each individual tab. And I agree with that. Now, the last thing that they've changed, and I think this is change for changes sakes as opposed to change for an improvement, is right now you can grab the corner of any window in Blender like this and you can drag out and create new windows or I can drag back and get rid of them. Well, they've taken out the indicator in the corner. So it used to be a little uh, basically tear away tab there that made it visually indicate that you should do something there. And instead, they've just rounded off the corners. And this is just an aesthetic change and they've taken away functionality. I like the look of these rounded corners, but they should put the, the visual slashes back in to indicate that that's how you do things. I think this new setup is less intuitive and a little bit less clean. Again, uh, Blender 2.8, uh, the code quest is literally only halfway done and we're only going to be seeing um, you know a beta release by the end of this year. So nothing is set in stone as of yet. But I guarantee you of all the changes they've done and most likely all of the changes that they will do, changing the keyboard settings, the default keyboard settings is about as controversial as you could get. The only thing I could think that would royal up the community even more, I mean, honestly, something I think they should actually do is to change to a left click select. But uh, I don't think they're ever going to go down that road, at least not by default. So uh, that is the most recent change to the keyboard shortcuts in Blender. If you're interested in learning more about them, there's actually a write up right here of why they did it, what they did, and then this handy table of what has changed. Oh, so that's what other tools are doing and why they've adopted it. But if you go down here, you can actually see um, what has, oh, I'm in the wrong. I didn't actually see this guy before. There's another one. I will link it down below that basically shows what hotkeys they've changed to. Oh, this might be it right here. That's not it. Anyways, I will find it. And I will link it down below. But basically, it is a quick reference of all of the new keys showing which ones are coming soon, etc. I will throw that in the links down below. So if you want, you know, a bit of a quick reference for all of the things that just changed, check the links down below. I will have uh, some stuff down there for you guys to look at. So let me know what you think. Again, I know this is going to be a controversial change to a certain degree. People love their hotkeys. Uh, are you in the same school of thought as me that the existing hotkeys just didn't make a lot of sense? You should have single key combinations for the most common things. Or do you like pressing three to four keys to do you know what other people are doing in one? Uh, let me know in the comments down below where you think. Do you like these changes? Do you think they're good for a beginner but bad for an experienced user? Or you know, are you just going to wait and see how everything finishes up? Now, again, I do have to throw that warning in. And once more, 100% still under development. So I, I actually, if you hate what they're doing here, do give them feedback. Um, that's you know the perfect time for doing it. Uh, they're going to be together for about another month, I think, doing this kind of stuff. So I imagine you will see the the quickest time to get your feedback in is, pro or the most effective time to get your feedback in is probably right now. So uh, you know either let the feedback go in the comments down below or log into the uh, Blender developer forums and give them your feedback there. And you know what, the feedback of I hate change, change is bad doesn't help, you know, so, you know, qualify why you don't like the change other than for the fact it's changed, because that's one of the big design motos they're going with, with Blender 2.8. Um, they're doing the change now because they're making a lot of changes now. So it's like kind of ripping the bandaid off all at once. So if you're opposed to it just because it's a change, they're probably not going to listen to you. But if you're opposed to it because it hurts your workflow and you can explain why it hurts your workflow, that is the kind of feedback that I'm imagining that they will be listening to. All right. Again, I'm going to be interested in seeing how the comment section go on this one down below what do you think uh do you think it's changed for the best or the worst or don't care at all do let me know and i will talk to you all later goodbye